I'm Debbie Cates, and I am at the Reuse Rally for the Arts show in Northampton, and it's a it's a fabulous event. And um, here are the things that I make out of other things: upcycled clothes and accessories from things that had been other clothes in the past. I just often look at things and see what they could be instead of what they are. And um, I, when I first started making uh, headbands and clothes for myself, I would go to thrift shops and I'd look for like a great shirt. Like this was, all these were shirts, you know, out of, out of different things. And then I have combined them with fleece on the inside and then another fabric on the outside. And um, it, um, it, it, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel good to use, to, to bring life to something that has been discarded. I think of it as rescue design, that, um, that items are getting rescued from obscurity and on to be something new for someone else. One of the best parts of what I do is, is I'm the thrill of the hunt, of finding all the stuff. So I'm in thrift shops all the time, Salvation Army, Goodwill, church sales, rummage sales. And what's the best, best, best is finding it in a pile on the side of the road. That's the only thing better than finding it at the thrift shop. In fact, that's where this was part of a very large skirt that after a rainstorm was in a box out on the side of the road. I do a little bit of wholesale. I sell on my website, uh, debbiecates.com, and um, people who are interested and past customers come over and buy right out of my third floor studio in my house and shows. I do shows uh, in conjunction with organizations so I can then give um, the organization like the Literacy Project. I'll do a show with them and I've done those in the past where um, I give them 20% of the gross and we use both of our mailing lists and I get to write a check at the end of the day to an organization I really support while I'm still trying to cobble together a little living. Hi, my name is Barbara Beach. I'm a local artist and I make earrings, among other things, out of bottle caps. Um, this is the first time in my artistic career that I have really, really, really enjoyed myself and found a place where I fit in. Um, and it feels good. The idea came when I went to Oaxaca. I found in Mexico. I found a similar earring and I looked at it and it resonated and I said I would like to make them. So I tried to, when I let it stew for a while and then I tried to figure out how to make them and I was amazed at myself that I could figure it all out. Um, and I just started to make them and it's been one fun day after another making them and enjoy making each one different. I am very interested in reusing things more than I'd ever thought possible. In fact, this event today has made my heart sing with just so much wonderful community spirit and, and the, the people giving things for free and, and, and it just seems a very joyful thing and, and it means a lot to me it, to recycle everything. In fact, if I it was given a, a choice to go to Nordstrom's or here, I would shop here. <laughs> I find my materials everywhere. In fact, I hit up my friends. I say, look through your drawers, look through your jewelry boxes and any old things that, that could be hung from an earring. Um, if you don't want them anymore, and people bring me boxes of great treasures. I use magazines and art books and also. I sell them on Etsy, I sell them to friends, I, I sell them to, at, at places like this. My future goal and the future vision for my business is just to keep on creating and enjoying myself and not worry about sales as much as just enjoying the process process, not the product. I don't 
think there's any challenge in using recycled materials. There's so much stuff out there in this world that we can, you know, look at and try to create from that I, I, it's not challenging at all. I mean, there's just a plethora of stuff that we can reuse again. I make special orders if you have a special person or thing you'd like me to make, um, I would be glad to do it. Hi, my name is Anna Boisvert. Um, I'm the daughter of Mary Lynn Boisvert, who's the owner of Bethany Home Crafts. Uh, we make recycled felted wool clothing and home goods. We were motivated to use recycled materials because there's just too much waste in the world. Uh, we wanted to, and we go to, go to thrift stores a lot and we see all these lost sweaters that need a home and so we take them home and we felt them up and we reuse them and give them a new life, let them live again. We find most of the materials we use at thrift stores, uh, Savers, Goodwill, Salvation Army. Um, some of our more dedicated customers have also taken to donating sweaters to us. Uh, it will be at a different, different craft shows and people could just come in with bags of sweaters for us. Uh, we actually have a couple shoppers as well that will shop for cashmere for us and then give us the bill and the bag of sweaters. <laughs> we sell mostly at farmers markets throughout Connecticut. Um, we do a lot of Christmas and craft fairs too around mostly Connecticut and throughout the Northeast. Right now our, our main goal for the business is that we're working with the splitting up and doing different shows. Um, up to this point, we've only been doing one show at a time, and both my mother and I have been going to the same show on the same day. But today is actually the first day that we're split up at two different events. Um, last night we did the big splitting up of the inventory, which is kind of scary. Who gets what, what goes where, um, but it's working out well so far. There are the challenges. Um, some people see a stigma to reused materials, um, unfortunately. Uh, we'll see some people, a couple walk through the Sometimes the woman will be like, oh, wow, that's great. You know, it's recycled. That's awesome. The, the husband boyfriend will just kind of look at us like, that's kind of dirty, <laughs> um, which is never a fun thing to hear. And then, you know, the practical things, we have to sometimes work around moth holes and different things like that, but it's definitely worth it. My name is David Bowles, and this is the stone art that I do that comes from the Green River up in Greenfield, Massachusetts. I've probably been working on my art for about 35 years. When I was about 21 is when I began. I kind of like the idea of not spending money on art, and I spend a lot of time out in nature, and I find that nature helps you find how to make art without having to spend money. A lot of them maybe are put out to people's garbage. I pick up wood. Sometimes I go to area carpenters or businesses and ask them for uh, recyclable material. Uh, the stones that I find, I usually find um, along tributaries or along the Green River. You know, I don't really market my art very much. As a matter of fact, this is probably the first art show I've done in probably 15 years. Um, so theoretically, I sell most of it out of my house, but I also probably give a lot away a lot more than I sell. Uh, it's kind of hard to make art for money. Well, you know, I love to see how much people enjoy it. I like to see how much kids enjoy it. And um, it kind of makes me enthusiastic to continue doing it. And hopefully I'll keep coming up with the material that will make it fun. I think you've got to be patient and wait for the materials to tell you what to do. And so my basement's full of a lot of stuff that sits around for a long time until it decides what it wants to do. <laughs> I'm Laura Bundeson and uh, I do uh, the owner of Frisky Furnishings. I take old furniture and um, I also use some other recycled materials to make uh, wall art. And um, I sort of don't know what I'm doing until I get there. <laughs> But I have a lot of fun doing it. This is a child rocking chair. Just be big hearted. It's uh, hand painted. <laughs> Takes a minute. <laughs> it's hand painted with um, acrylic paint. Finished with a, um, um, a poly finish that's uh, pretty durable. And uh, same thing here. Latex paint on the lotus chair. These are old cheese boards that were being thrown away by a catering company that I refinished and made some art out of. And uh, a mannequin that found its way to me from the, almost, almost got uh, trashed from a, a um, 
an underwear store. <laughs> I'm pretty new at it. I've been uh, started my business um, within the last year, and I've just moved to the area in June from New York City. So I am really making a push to grow my business here. I have an Etsy shop. Uh, it's called Frisky Furnishings. I'm Katie Cavaco. Uh, from Free Ramblin' Kids, and I make uh, baby booties and rattles and toys out of upcycled wool sweaters. I started making um, upcycled products about two years ago after I graduated from college. Um, I went to school for fashion design at MassArt, and I always had an interest in eco-friendly fashion, and so I thought starting small with kids stuff would be a good place to start. <laughs> I think that there's so much wasted fabric out there in the world, that can be reused and given new life. Um, and I think it's a lot of fun to sort of take what's out there and rework it. I mostly find my materials at thrift stores. Um, sometimes friends will give me their, their sweaters that they've accidentally felted in the wash. Um, but mostly thrift stores, secondhand shops. I sell my products locally at Loot up in Turner's Falls, um, the Sawmill River Arts Gallery in Montague and the Daylily in South Deerfield, and I also do a lot of local craft fairs. I belong to the Artisans of Western Mass group, and uh, a lot of us are upcycled, recycled artisans. I would love to expand my business to include um, other children's clothing also made out of upcycled materials. Um, I know you from you know, the, the ages of living in North Hampton. I can see it. Yes. Are you involved in the organization? I'm, I'm involved. Yes. 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 Hi, my name is Dave DC. My business is piece by piece deconstruction, and I take apart uh, houses, barns, garages, uh, in order to try to save as, as much of the material for reuse. What I'd like to do is um, create a deconstruction service that really is available to everyone. Um, traditionally, in, in deconstruction, there's there's always uh, two main points of opposition when you compare deconstruction to traditional demolition and that's cost. The cost is higher because uh, it, you're using uh, human labor rather than machinery to do the house and uh, the project takes longer um, and so different organizations are, are working on both those both those ideals really to address them and I decided to address cost. So by Carrying down my business, I work by myself. I take the house apart completely by myself. Um, I can avoid a lot of the overhead costs. Um, I actually uh, camp on site. So uh, one of the things, you know, when I looked at traditional construction or deconstruction, um, they, they tend to spend a lot of money uh, transporting people to the site. Um, they, they spend a lot of money on um, uh, housing people uh, when they're there lodging. So um, one of the things I thought of was just staying on site, living on site during the job. So in essence, um, since I, I work all over the state of Massachusetts and upstate New York, um, I, I can uh, really minimize how much fuel I use in the process and keep my, my, uh, my carbon footprint to a minimum. And that also helps just create a cost structure that makes it competitive with traditional demolition. Um, and so I've, I've attacked that. My jobs take longer than traditional demolition, but my cost is the same. And so my ideal for the future is really to build my deconstruction business 
And then in the wintertime, when I'm not doing as much deconstruction, to move to the creative side and uh, do some furniture, some, some art projects, and really um, just look at all the materials that are in my waste stream. I still, uh, the last project I did, I still had 26% waste from that project, uh, which is low compared to normal demolition, but still, um, there's, there's lots of material there that can be, can be uh, uh, used in some manner other than uh, going to the landfill. I'm Barbara Goldstein. I make insulated window shades. The warm and toasty windows save so much money when you for heating. Last night it went down to 20 degrees. It was probably 65 in our house and when I woke up the mo in the morning it was only about 62. So we had not lost very much heat because we insulated our windows with warm and toasty windows. Making warm and toasty windows insulated shades. I had so much leftover fabric. It's like, but being a fiber artist, I can't get rid of fabric. So I'm accumulating more and more and more and more. And it's finally, what can I do out of it? And I started making bags. And I make this, these great bags, this great messenger bag. Mm -hmm. And this actually is a wonderful knitting bag. I mean, it can be used as a purse, but it's also great knitting bags all lined with pockets. And so I started trying to make inroads into using up my leftover fabric. And then I started just doing tote bags. Oh, oh, this is the same fabric. I do have other fabrics. <laughs> um, and then it sort of morphed into using sweaters because I love, I mean, I love wool. So I make, in, I make uh, fingerless gloves and bags and remade sweaters. Um, and then I also make jackets, and I always have so much fabric left over from making jackets that I started doing, you know, scrap pieces for jackets. And there you have it, and I do hats. You know, I always have, like, yarn, and I get yarn from FreeCycle, I knit, and I make hats and neck warmers, and there you have it. Hi, my name is Trent Guyon. Uh, I am Metalwood Common Good, and we make functional art and furniture out of recycled and abandoned materials. Um, all kind of salvaged and reclaimed materials, metal, wood. Um, make all sorts of things from trunks, tables, um, conference tables, little coat racks, candle holders, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> I started um, maybe three years ago. What motivated me to start using recycled materials? Um, mostly the inexpensive cost of recycled materials at first. Um, being a beginning woodworker, um, a couple years back new materials are pretty expensive. Um, and being able to purchase reclaimed materials uh, that was a more affordable price point. Um, and then being able, as I got better as a woodworker, to offer uh, products you know, for people to buy, uh, they were also more affordable because we were using cheaper uh, recycled materials. So we find materials um, on the internet, uh, the side of the road, flea markets, tag sales, um, junkyards, all over. We always keep our eyes open for new stuff. Uh, we sell all over. We sold commissions um, in Boston, New York City, Long Island, Vermont, um, all over Western Massachusetts. Future goals um, would be eventually to acquire enough materials to create a product line um, that we could eventually push to retailers. Sometimes a lot of the um, materials are a little bit harder to work with. Sometimes they got nails in them or they're not quite straight. Um, so yeah, using reclaimed materials always has a little bit more of a challenge, but I think the end product always comes out with a little more character. Hello, my name is Shoshona King. I upcycle jewelry from old vintage pieces that have been lost and are now found. I started making jewelry uh, maybe about a year ago. A friend of mine was having a craft fair and I thought, hey, yeah, I could, I could have a table. And so <laughs> I figured something out and I got it together and um, 
now this is my second show that I'm in, and it just seemed perfect for me. <laughs> it's great, all the different artists that are here. It's amazing to see all the repurposed items that people have come up with from all the things that were otherwise thrown away are now reloved. <laughs> the best part about using up recycled materials is their low cost. Sometimes you have more time than money, and that would be me. <laughs> So I went about and went to tag sales, which I like to do anyways. And along with finding stuff that I need in my regular life and for my kids, I also found little bits of treasures and sparkly, shiny things that would go perfect in our jewelry. Once you start collecting, you'll find all kinds of ways really to pick out your favorite materials. I like to go to tag sales and flea markets. And Brimfield is also an interesting place. There can be some um, expensive things there, but there can be tucked in the back. There's always these little spots where someone's got something they don't want anymore, and you can snap it up. And you'll find that friends and relatives and just people that you meet around will be like, oh, you know, I've got something that's just perfect for that, and I'm not going to use it. And they don't want to throw it away because it's still kind of neat. And, but they don't want to keep it clanking around the house, so they give it to you. And I'm always findable on Facebook at Crown and Fiddle community page. Thank you. I'm Macy Faella and this is Amber Ladley. We are Knack, the art of clever reuse. We are in the process of starting a creative reuse center in the Pioneer Valley. So we hope to have a space where people can come in to buy upcycled art, can also buy donated goods for the use of creative activities, and also do workshops to learn how to use things in different sort of art projects. We've been crafting all of our lives and reusing all of our lives, but officially we started in July. Um, and we have a great website knack.org that you can check for um, updates and see what we're up to. And we make a lot of the stuff that we're selling. These are uh, wine bottles with chalkboard paint, jewelry organizers, different sorts of meshes boards. We use things from the recycling bin because there's just already too much stuff out there and there's so much great stuff that you can make with stuff you already have. If you need a bird feeder, you can just use an old CD case. <laughs> There's no need to buy more stuff. You've got it all and you can do lots of stuff with it. We find the materials in our, near our garbage cans, <laughs> in our recycling bins. Uh, people give us stuff that they say, this is too great to throw away, but I don't think anyone else would want it. Can you do something with it? And we say, of course we can. Uh, our vision is to have that retail store that I was talking about that's a great community space where people can donate goods, buy goods, make art, see art, um, and a place where people can learn about the art of reuse. My name is Natalie Lewis um, and I'm a Coptic Stitch bookbinder. Um, I make all of my products out of discarded books that I find and papers that are uh, donated to me. I've collected paper my whole life um, and I've never really, I've been kind of always feeling unsure about like why I was doing that and just seeing the amount of waste in the world. I mean it's, I, you know, college kids throwing out their notebooks, you know, at the end of the semester, um, just boxes upon boxes of curbside books. Um, it, the motivation comes from, you know, feeling connected to, the, to nature and to the environment and it's just crucial. There's no reason to buy anything new anymore. Mostly I sell my products at craft shows like this one. Um, online I have an Etsy shop and um, local, local venues. My hope is that I will actually get a website running, that I will um, become more involved in the local community here and, um, and, and have my Etsy shop kind of be more of a full-time thing. I am Zoe Ma from Valley of the Doll and I make jewelry and other art oddities out of recycled items. So a big inspiration for me in using recycled materials has been um, my mother, who has always done it, um, making things out of shells, old pantyhose, and um, string, and uh, clothespins and things like that so I don't know if it's genetic or I just absorbed it by watching her do it 
um, but she's definitely been an inspiration for me and was way ahead of her time in repurposing. My future goal for my business, and this is a little embarrassing to admit, but I kind of think of myself as the grungy Martha Stewart. The challenges to using recycled materials are probably, um, well, I need to clean the stuff. Um, I boil and I wash all the bottle caps that I get. And sometimes I don't know where things have come from. So when people want to know what type of metal is this or so forth, I don't always know that. Um, but I do enjoy the things that I do know, the history behind them, where they came from, what people used to use the item for. Um, so I enjoy telling the story and learning the story about the item. I would love to have a line of just strictly recycled metal stuff that can turn rusty and be loved for it. I've been doing mosaics with kids Brazil, Cambodia, Sri Lanka, India, and it's a lot of broken tiles. It's all reused stuff. It's not really why I do it, but that's it's it's cheap, it's easy, and you know, you're working with poor kids, and that's the only really possibility. Um, so I've been doing that for a number of years, and then I did the the lizards. There's a piece called Global Warming, because um, we don't have lizards crawling the walls here. You go to this I saw some, I do. believe I've seen lizards very similar to this crawling on the Pulse Gallery walls in Springfield. Oh, yes. These, these were them. I just took them down from here to bring them up here. And, you know, the idea, you know, we don't have lizards now, but with global warming maybe we will in the future. So that was a piece. It was installation. Um, and then Deborah asked me to be part of this. And so I said, well, I, I do murals and, and I do those. So I said, okay. And so I was playing with the wire sculpture. I do a lot of dancers, so just playing what can I actually do with wire sculpture that other than the lizards, which I did. So I, I did these break dancers. And actually, I think I have the most interesting recycled material here. The paper with the print and the drawing I got from Sri Lanka. It's made out of elephant dung. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. They pay people that, you know, poor people bring the elephant dung in and they make paper out of it. So I figured, okay, I have to do something on that. And it actually takes ink and takes print really beautifully. So those are pieces off of that. And the other mosaics, I just I did some small broken china. All, all the mirrors recycled. Um, and gla glass is recycled. Actually, the paint here is recycled. I have a friend who works, um, you know, Grumbackers, and they throw, they have the bad paints that they throw away, and so he brings me some, and so that's painted on, and it's all recycled mirror. So it's, it's all, basically. Oh, this is from the Casca Company. <laughs> it's like, okay, how far can I push this? So these are throwaways from the cask company in Florence. I'm Bob Melnick. Um, I am with uh, Green River Woodcraft. And today I, I brought in some of my wood turnings and a, a bench. Um, the wood turnings are all from recycled wood that mainly I saved from uh, dump pits that uh, wood service or landscape people use to throw their refuse. Um, well, this one happened to be a storm damage tree. Uh, this bench is 90% uh, recycled. This here, the dark wood is from a, uh, an old Singer sewing machine table, and these were old school desk legs. So, I'm also sharing my, uh, my, my space with the Northampton High School wood shop. We made some cutting boards as a fundraiser to, to sell, also a few other pens and, and small items to sell as a fundraiser for our, uh, our department so we can buy some more equipment in the wood shop. The wood from the, uh, the, the wood shop is actually from the Florence Casket Company. They donate a lot of their materials to us um, that they're not going to be able to use for the caskets, but it's perfect for us. These different bowls that I made have been, over the last couple of years, that I've, I've been able to make things. Um, and some of, the, some of the materials for this bench I've had in my possession for five or six years and just didn't know what to do with. And I recently kind of had the idea for the bench and uh, made it then. I like the idea of taking something old and making something new out of it. 
And I also like, with the bowls, it's really, it's the best way to get interesting wood. It's, um, you can go out and buy stuff, but it's, it's easier to find very interesting grain patterns and, and burls and stuff if you go out on your own with the permission of the landowner or wherever and, and find the stuff. And, and dead and dying trees are frequently very interesting on the inside because the diseases make the wood look different. As a teacher, we have a lot of time off in the summer. In the last couple of years, I've been working for a painter or doing concrete and stuff that it's, it's not as fun as doing this. And if I can make money, do enough money doing this, I'd hopefully have a business in the summer that I can work the woodworking and, and be the teacher in the regular year and be able to blend the two together. Sometimes you sell a piece and you don't know if you'll ever be able to get this stuff again. Like the, these, these particular legs, they're not too rare, but they can be hard to find. If you don't, if you, if you, if you don't know where to get them, it, it's hard to locate them. And sometimes it's hard to part with stuff at that because of that. So this, this uh, bench, you know, it's priced because I don't know I, when I'm going to be able to get the materials like this again. So the scarcity is the hardest part. I do custom work. If you like anything here but it doesn't quite fit your needs, um, I can make stuff bigger, or smaller, whatever, but I do do custom work. I'm Sharon Raymond, and I've been a shoemaker for about 25 years. Now I mostly teach shoemaking and have written books about shoemaking um, and try to share the information that I've learned with the next generation. When I started shoemaking, I used um, the standard quite toxic cements and uh, petroleum-based soling materials and uh, had no problem with that, never thought there was any issue for a good 10 years. And then slowly, um, the effects that it has on um, my health, the health of my family and the health of other people and the earth um, uh, had its impact on me and there was a time about four or five years ago when the, the uh, saying are you part of the solution or part of the problem really hit me and it was then it was like no more I can't do this any. I won't do this anymore I don't care They're, the things that I make are not as elegant as you can make with the cemented shoes and those more um, standardized souls, but I don't care. This is what I love, and this is what I want to teach and have other people be making as well. One of the materials I like to use the most is uh, wool coats. There's a lot of people that make things out of wool sweaters, but uh, wool coats are more substantial. It's just like a handmade felt um, without the patterns that you get in handmade felt. but. You can find a lot of wool coats that are, you know, have these tight armpits and stiff arms that you know nobody's going to really want to wear anymore uh, from the 70s or 80s. So I don't feel uh, bad about using those kind of coats. And um, so I've made most of these children's boots with um, the wool coats. Um, soling, I use um, bicycle tire inner tubes or regular tire inner tubes when I can get them for the soling on the totally recycled uh, footwear. Here's a bicycle tire. Another thing that I use and, and um, would really like to have a system of getting is uh, use flip-flop soles. Here's a flip-flop made out of uh, silk ties, so it's a pretty upscale sandal, but the soling is old flip-flop sole that the straps popped out of that people throw away by the millions every year. I would really like to start collecting those and distributing them to other people who want to make um, sandals out of the, the soles and keep them going till they're worn into nothing. Well, the only things that I sell are uh, books and DVDs. I don't make the shoes anymore except just um, samples using my ideas and so that I can put pictures on my website and hopefully 
inspire other people to start businesses or to make them for them for themselves. So I mostly sell on my website and my Etsy shop. Well, the challenges of using recycled materials, sure, it's easier to use um, leather. Of course, uh, leather also can you can get recycled. There's a, a lot of um, pocketbooks. Uh, I've got a sandal I'm working on that's made of all pocketbook straps, and it's really great, I think. So, um, so, but when you buy, if you buy a hide of leather, you know, you can just do a whole lot more of the same kind of thing instead of the mix and match kind of thing that you do when you're using recycled materials. But I enjoy that, really, the, the challenge and the serendipity of what develops when you're using things that are kind of limited. So, so really, um, a it's more fun than a challenge to use recycled materials. My name's Abby Reeser, and I work with used uh, materials, constructing assemblage, sculpture, sculptural pieces. I started working in um, found materials and making assemblages about the same time I started working at the landfill, uh, where I pick up most of my materials. What motivated me and motivates me to use recycled material are the patinas and the soft worn parts, the old paint. Um, I, I also like using wood and metal and other combination of materials, um, both of which I've worked in before I started doing assemblages. I sell my art in galleries. Uh, I recently had a show in Philadelphia and New York City and I am now have a show in Brattleboro, Vermont. The challenges of working with uh, recycled materials is how you combine them and have them hold together well enough that you can sell a piece and have it last. Um, so fastening and learning how to connect metal to wood um, and what layer to connect to what layer is, is a real learning experience. Hi, I'm Amy Wasserman. I'm a collage illustrator and a collage artist. I've been working for 30 years in collage. And this is upcycled vinyl flooring. It's made from flooring remnants after installations. It comes looking like this in rolls. And then I paint and collage it. I started uh, working on the vinyl uh, just a couple of years ago. I was, um, things were slowing down with my illustration work. And I was also getting a little burnt out doing illustration. and. I like helping the environment and I actually, this was a combination of different uh, arts that I was working in and that's why I came up with the vinyl flooring. It was something I had seen on television as an idea for floor cloths and I had a couple of them in my home and people saw them and were really attracted to them and that's why I sort of started running with it. I get my material from local flooring stores. It's left over after installations. It comes in 12 foot wide rolls. So if a room is only 10 feet wide, um, there's usually like a two foot by whatever length the piece is. And then um, I take those pieces and I'll cut them into smaller usable lengths like three or four feet long by two feet or three feet, whatever the size is. And that's what I work on in my studio or two by approximately two by three foot pieces. I've been selling them uh, mostly at craft shows, word of mouth. Um, I may approach Etsy at some point in the future, but I'm not there yet. I recently joined the Artisans of Western Mass, and I didn't bring any of those materials with me, but that's a group uh, locally of artists in the western part of Massachusetts. Jeff Weeks uh, here at the first reuse rally for the arts by the Northampton Department of Public Works. 
and uh, I am the designer fabricator uh, for Snack Shop Design. Uh, it's a, essentially a lighting business where I make lamps from found objects. And it was uh, actually born of a love of uh, automobiles uh, in that I own a, a, or rent a garage to work on old cars and uh, a friend of mine and I who own it decided that we should help pay for it by making things and uh, it made perfect sense because I had a lot of objects around that I really loved that I would find. Uh, so I started building the lamps of found objects just from that love of um, kind of older pieces, quality pieces, what I saw as quality pieces that uh, oftentimes are cast aside because they're antiquated, old, or um, somehow not perfect. And so my, my whole life I've collected objects and uh, so this is sort of a, a, just an offspring of that, um, putting things to, to practical use. My materials are sourced from a variety of different places. Oftentimes I just find something as I'm walking along. Uh, for instance, there's one lamp which just simply named the Housatonic lamp, which is uh, a lamp that, uh, it's a kind of a 19th century wrought iron floor lamp that uh, was cast aside, I found on the bank of the Housatonic River in Great Barrington. Uh, others, uh, like a, a lamp uh, here in the front of my display, is uh, from a mirror, a floor mirror that would have been at a shoe, st a shoe store. Um, sitting on the ground and it's just one half of the armature that held the mirror up. Uh, oftentimes, lately, now that people are knowing, know that I, I make lamps, uh, objects are coming into me uh, as well as broken lamps. So I'll use some parts of those broken lamps in combination with other objects that I find um, in the garbage on the side of the road. Sometimes at tag sales I will purchase um, I, some items as well to incorporate into the design of each lamp. People have been amused by coins. For, you found coins that have been pierced and worn as ornaments back before Christ in the ancient days. Okay. We show people coins like this just as examples. <clears throat> if you move along up to the Depression, along with tramp art, people discovered hobo coins, which were people with little chisels that actually took and altered the appearance of the coin like making a skeleton head out of an Indian head and a buffalo nickel. During World War II, people made rings out of quarters by beating on the quarter on the edge for hour after hour after hour until it formed a ring. Um, then all of a sudden this started, taking a little saw blade and actually carving away the background of a coin, trying to make it swim inside the rim so you only see the beauty of the design as opposed to you know, just a plain old coin. <laughs> After um, years went by, I guess you could say, suddenly you wake up to the fact that the coins aren't, are disappearing. Some of the best looking coins that were ever minted have disappeared. All of a sudden you find if you can get them, people say, I remember that, I love that. And it's a way of restoring people's faith, it's a way of restoring their interests and giving them a copy of something they truly love. From there on out, it's just playing with the fine saw blade. That one took about 20 hours, I figure. That's a Chinese round or trade coin. That's just a half penny from Great Britain, but doesn't it look a lot different than a blob of copper? These are regional one pound coins from Great Britain, somewhat rare. Now they're taken out of circulation because Great Britain has gone into the decimal system. Everything in the top down to the one on the bottom left. You know, it's a shame because people will never see them again. And what gave you the idea to do this? Well, somebody gave me the pattern. Oh, yeah? To do it. yeah. And I like to crochet from plastic uh, bags. So, I started to make them. Well, they come out really great. You do wool piecing also? I do wool. I do box. Yes. Out of um, old wool material. It's hard to find wool today. How long have you been doing uh, this sort of work? How long have I been doing this? Mm -hmm. It must be over 50. 
15 years, it's hard to find nice plastic bags today. Mm -hmm. At one time, you were able to, but now maybe Walmart is nice. This is Walmart. This is it's Food Land. And some of those other bags are are so thin. They're, they're not very nice. You know? mm -hmm. Did you draw this? I can do this. My sister did, but she told me to bring it so yeah. people could see what could be done with Christmas cards. This, this is, these are from Christmas cards. Oh, wow. It's a scenery. No. That's cool. I know.